Hi everyone, Cassie here. Welcome back for another Pear Blossom Press video. We're going to be using the twinkle lights. That's what it said. So here is what those twinkle lights look like. You all know I love every light that has come out of Pear Blossom Press and the twinkle lights are no exception. We're also going to be using some Pear Blossom Press vellum, some Pear Blossom Press black card sentiment stock. And then I have this stamp set from Trinity Stamps. It's brand new. It's called the Half Pint Jar. It also has these matching dies because we're going to do a double here. We're going to make it a twinkle and a flat shaker. Yeah, we're going to do both because I have to. But this set is great because it has not only bugs but lights. So lots of light up opportunities. And then I have this matching stencil that goes along with the jar. So we're going to pull that in too. Uh, finally, I'm going to bring in a couple of other things. We've got our A7 tree frame. So this is going to be a five by seven card. And then we have our Watts Up stamp set for our sentiments because this one's great for light ups as well. I'm going to be using some mixed media paper. This is six by eight. So that's perfect. This one's from scrapbook.com. So I'm going to pull out one of these pieces and then we'll get started on our background. This is a longer video for me but stick with me because this is going to turn out so fun. Like I said, it's a double. We're doing a shaker and a light up. So I'm cutting this down to be five by seven. And then we're going to bring in some distress oxides along with some blending brushes. That first color that I have is the cracked pistachio. And then I'm going to bring in some evergreen bow. Um, and I decided to use the Distress Oxides because I knew these would blend so beautifully, just seamlessly. And I wasn't really sure about the color combo, to be honest with you. I'd seen a picture and I liked it. And so I thought, well, what do I have that matches? And this is the best I could come up with. And in the end, I think it looks really pretty. It's very different than what I normally would have chosen for like a background with trees and lightning bugs. But... Um, and I think it depends on where you're from, if they're called lightning bugs or if they're called, I don't know what, it, what the other term is, <laughs> but I call them lightning bugs. Um, fireflies, that's another thing. Um, we call them lightning bugs where I'm from, and, but fireflies is another one. And I'm, I live in the South now, so, but when I was a child, they were lightning bugs and I loved catching them and putting them in a jar. I know, cruel, but <laughs> as a kid, oh, just wanted to do that so bad, right? And so I've, you know, brought in Lucky Clover and then Pine Needles and our final color here is some black soot. Again, I feel like this just is such a good gradient between all those colors. It really works out well. And the nice thing about those Distress Oxides is you can just keep working them and because they kind of sit more on the paper rather than soaking into the paper, which is what the Distress Inks do. So once I'm happy with that blend, then we're going to clean up our mess and I'm going to do a little bit of water spritzing on there. I'll spritz it into my hand and kind of sprinkle that all over that background. It's going to give that more of a, I don't know, I don't, bokeh maybe, maybe not because I'm not using like white ink or anything like that. But I'll let that sit for a few seconds and then just kind of dab that up. I really, really like how that looks. Unexpected, but I love it. So then I've brought in the A7 tree frame. I don't love this branch sitting there. I mean, I like it normally, but for what I'm trying to get at here, I'm going to cut that off and it's going to be fine. The reason I cut that off is because I want this jar to kind of sit in there. And so I'm kind of playing around with that. And then the jar needs to kind of come in here. So I'm going to take the jar die and I'm going to tack it down with a little bit of mint tape. We'll move away our A7 frame and then I'm going to run this through our die cutting machine. I was trying to play through in my mind how this was even going to work uh, because I've never done this before where you add not only a shaker, but it's a flat shaker, a flat shaker and some lights and the lights come in very last. The shaker is going to be first. So I'm going to I lined up our little lightning bugs. I'm going to ink those up with some black pigment ink because these are distress oxides, which are a, a pigment hybrid here. And so I want that black to stand out. And then what's neat about this die set that you can get is that it has two different options for cutting out your, your bugs. You can cut out your bug. You can cut out your bug that also cuts out its little rear end, right? Or you can just cut out the rear end. I probably should have just cut out the rear end, but at first when I was trying, you know, like I said, I'm flying by the seat of my pants here and it worked out just fine. You'll see that in the end. 
I have a piece of vellum in my misty, my middle, my little mini misty, and I am trying to line up the jar. In hindsight, I should have used the shaker die on that vellum and cut it out first, and then I could have brought the stamp to the vellum, but this works out fine too. I wanted to um, stamp this onto the vellum, and in order to do that, because it's not like a paper that'll soak up the ink, you're gonna wanna probably emboss that. So I'm using a pigment ink. I used my anti-static powder tool to begin with, stamped my pigment ink down on top, and then I do have some, some fine detail black embossing powder that I'm using, and probably should have just brought in the coffee filter. I didn't end up making a mess, surprise, surprise, but you know, I'm kind of a lazy crafter, and so <laughs> if I can cut some corners, I will, not always a good idea. Um, that doesn't always pan out for me. I don't know how you are. But we're gonna heat set that and it's vellum so you're gonna move quickly because that will heat up very fast. Then we'll bring in our shaker die to go over the top of that and we'll die cut that out because what that'll do is cut out the center as well as you can see here. And so then we can start thinking about how everything's gonna line up. It's gonna be great. I can see it in my mind. <laughs> it's gonna be great. So here's what I'm talking about. It'll cut out the bug and the little rear end. I'm gonna take that mint tape and just stick down the bug on the backside. We're gonna avoid the little rear end piece, but I do want the bug to stay in place, so I'm just, just using that mint tape. Um, and, because again, flying by the seat of my pants, I wasn't sure how those were gonna stay in place. You'll see I end up making it permanent here in a little bit when I bring in the vellum that I need to bring in. So I'll use a little paper piercer or paper piercer and I'll poke out their little rears, their little lightning bug part. And then I'm gonna bring in that vellum that I just used. We'll trim it down and each of those pieces will go over the top of that back side with a little bit of glue going around it and that holds everything into place. And it also will kind of soften up the twinkling. You won't just see the light itself. Like, you know, you'll, you'll see the light, but you won't see the mechanism, if that makes any sense. So now our little bugs are in place. So here's where we're gonna make it a flat shaker. I like to use my packaging. I've got leftover packaging that I just hang on to. Uh, and I am going to tack that down using some double-sided adhesive. You could use liquid glue if you wanted to, just make sure you don't get it too close to the edge. But I'll peel off all of that release paper as I'm going, and then I can take my packaging and stick that right down on top. Again, thinking this through in my head, because, you know, I don't want to ruin that background that I just spent some time making. So now that'll go over the top of that, just trying to make sure everything fits into place. Before I do any of that, I am gonna add a little bit of glue just to the edge. I should have done the next part first, which is bring in my anti-static powder tool, because then I don't risk getting any of that glue on it, but it worked out. And then I have a couple of different types of shaker bits. These are some gold stars from Trinity Stamps, and then I also have some little Boca hearts so pretty iridescent and I don't want to fill it too much because I want those bugs to show through but now that that's on there we'll attach down our piece and it looks fairly seamless and then I'll use a very thin line of glue around the edge of that and we can attach down our vellum and we let that dry now that everything is dry we're gonna bring in some gold paint and I am going to flick that all over that background. Probably should have done that before I attached down the shaker, but I'm gonna just do it right over the top. If it comes off, it comes off. I don't really care. And look at how beautiful that gold looks. And yeah, some of it's on the packaging itself, but I didn't have any problem with any of it coming off. Next, I have our jar lid. I've decided to use the jar lid and I've attached this down to my grip mat and I'm just ink blending on some hickory smoke ink. And then I'm going to move on to using that stencil. So like I said, there's a matching stencil and pardon my head, it gets in the way quite a bit. So this matching stencil for our half pint jar has several options for making this look like it's got some lighting to it which I think is cool. So I brought in some Lost Shadow Distress Oxide. The hickory smoke that I used was regular Distress Ink, but I brought in that Lost Shadow because it's 
a lighter color and it will sit on top of what I've already done. I heat set that to make sure it was dry and I'll bring in that stencil one more time. And then we're gonna bring in some white, this is shark tooth, some white pigment ink and we'll go over the top of that. It did kind of seep through, but eh, it's okay. I don't mind. So once I pull that away, you can see how that looks like the light is hitting the jar. I'll bring in the stamp for the top of the jar and I'll ink that up with some VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink, which is a pigment ink, pardon my head, and I'm just gonna stamp that right on top of what I've already done. So we've got our jar lid ready to go. I don't wanna attach that down yet. I wanna attach down first our A7 tree frame. So I'm gonna just put some glue all over that. And then you're probably wondering, when are we gonna to get to the lights? We will. That's our last thing, basically. I wanted this background to be all done and ready before we attach those lights. And so now I can attach down the jar lid. I wanted those trees to be in the back and the jar to be more in the forefront. And so we can attach down the jar lid. But before I do that, I do remember I did want to bring in some of the silver and I'm bringing back in what was die cut out just because I don't want that silver to come through on there. I just want it to be more on the trees. So I'm focusing on just the edges and then we've got a lot of spatter and shimmer and it looks like some nighttime, maybe not fully nighttime, but getting there and in the forest where you would potentially catch your little lightning bugs. I lived more in the country when I was growing up, so they were all over at night in the summer. And then I'll attach down the jar lid. While all that's drying, I'm going to stamp out my sentiment. I'm also going to stamp out the little word press that I need. And that one comes from the uh, Pear Blossom Press stamp set that she has in her store. But I've used an anti-static powder tool. I'm going to stamp out my sentiment. And then I'll cover that with some white fine detail embossing powder. And I do the same with the word press because we need that later on as well. And then I'll hit that with my heat tool until that is smooth and melted. I trimmed it down and now we're just gonna go ahead and adhere that onto the front upper left hand side of the card using some liquid glue. And now we're gonna stamp out on the back of our card. I like, uh, you gotta do this before you attach anything. So the stamping, getting all that done is super important before you put those lights on because it does make it a little more difficult. So I like to stamp on the back with the lightning or the light bulb that comes in this little pear blossom press stamp set that says handmade for you. And then underneath that, I usually stamp out my little handmade by Cassie Trask. So that's my personal stamp that I put down on my cards. And then we'll be ready to start putting the lights on, which is the final step. So we already have a flat shaker. Now we're gonna pull in our um, twinkle lights snap them apart. They look really not a whole lot different than the easy lights. The difference is they're a little longer and they twinkle, which is fabulous. And so how I like to do this is I'll just take a little bit of scotch tape and attach that right down so that the light will show through. Make sure that light is lined up right over the hole. And the scotch tape is clear, so you're not going to see it and it doesn't hurt the mechanism. I'm always checking just to make sure everything is good to go. Now to attach down your mechanism itself, I've done it both ways where I've attached it to the panel, I've attached it to the card base. I wanted the battery to be accessible, so I am attaching this to the card panel. And I'm just gonna take some of that um, scotch tape and just attach everything else down. And it doesn't need to be pretty because it's gonna get covered. And then I'm going to bring in the World's Best Foam Tape by Pear Blossom Press. And it is just that. I'm going to go all the way around the edges and avoid the lights, but make sure that everything is nice and protected so that nothing collapses in. You can go over those cords, just don't go over the lights. But the release paper is fabulous. It comes right off and it's repositionable for up to 30 minutes. I've had to do it. I know it works. <laughs> Ah, so I love it. All right, so then I've got my press that I made earlier, and we're going to go ahead and attach that down to where the button would be. And check it out. Miles is in here. He loves it. Quality control gives it a two paws up. 
I haven't decided what I'm going to put on the inside. I'll probably do that later, but check it out. The little bug rear ends twinkle. We've got our darling little lightning bugs or fireflies or whatever you call them, but I love how this card turned out and I hope you do too. If you like this video, hit that like button. Definitely consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. And be sure to check out all that Pear Blossom Press has going on over on their blog, Facebook page, and Instagram for more crafty inspiration. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you soon.